just uh, understand that uh, there are certain uh just understand that there are certain uh, uh, you know uh, uh, there are certain uh, places where you have to sign as your uh, as a student so the student signatures are required so please make an effort to fi find out what are the what are the places where you need to do your signature because that is very uh, that is uh, compulsory so this is again the face sheet which has to be filled up by this uh, field work supervisor so you need not worry about this part this is what your supervisor is going to fill out okay now um this is a general introduction that they have given about the course and about the fieldwork placement we need not do into it we not get into it today uh, because this is not your uh, class for MSWL 13 now uh, th these are some uh, guidelines basically which you have to follow uh, not only during your 45 days of field work but also during your block placement so please understand that uh, this uh, your uh, field work part has to be taken very seriously and uh, since uh, you will be getting around 200 marks uh, you know for your uh, MSWL 13 and again 200 marks for your MSWL 14. That means that you will be uh, getting around 400 marks for your field work. Attendance is mandatory. So please make sure that you attend the field work uh, sessions regularly. And besides that, your meetings with the supervisor, including the, uh, the, the personal meetings, that is the individual conferences, okay? that you will have with your supervisor that has to be there at least five meetings you will be having with your supervisor so this is common for both your MSWL 13 as well as MSWL 14 okay and uh, uh, this whole field work carries around at least 40% of, uh, of weightage in your core courses of social work okay that is around 400 marks so this is very important and you have to uh, in order to get your final degree, you have to submit uh, these uh, four journals, two journals from the first year and two journals from your second year. So 13 and 14, you will submit for your first year, okay? And 15 and 16, these two journals, you will submit for your second year. So right now, you have to worry about your 13 and the 14 part and uh, finish it or try to finish it off before you actually start your uh, you know preparation for your examinations for your second year so in order to complete your um, uh, you know course in time it is always advisable that you give these um, uh, you know journal uh, duly filled uh, to your supervisor before the examinations for the second year so that way is what will happen is by the time you get your result you will be able to get the result for your field work as well and uh, you can start doing your work for the second year so that you can get your degree in uh, on time okay otherwise it, uh, you know it gets prolonged and it really becomes uh, difficult after a certain point of time for students so instead of prolonging your field work what i would suggest is as soon as you are you uh, finish with your MSWL 13 uh, um uh, classes uh, just start uh, uh, working on your field work okay connect with your uh, regional center or with the study center where you're enrolled and ask them to assign your supervisor so that you can start with your field work as soon as possible now this is something that you have to follow even for your MSWL 14 uh, first of all attendance is mandatory as we have already said so you need to have at least 30 full 30 days of attendance for your um, journal okay that is for your block placement so for MSWL 14 you have to give at least 30 days of work efforts uh, in any agency of your choice okay now we will come to the agency after this
also uh, please understand your limitations as a student so if you are having issues with the um, you know regularly going for field work because maybe you are working or maybe you have some other uh, uh, you know important uh, work uh, then you need to discuss it with the supervisor what are the days where you can find some time to actually um, uh, you know go and do these field, uh, these uh, field work so you have to uh, find out for yourself what are the convenient what what is the convenient time for you and uh, select your agency accordingly also you have to do at least two uh, methods of social work as i have pointed out so uh, depending on the choice of the methods that you follow so either you are take going for uh, case work and group work or you are going for group work and uh, community organization or maybe you are going for community organization and uh, social work research you have to decide how you are going to go about it okay so the kind of agency that is suitable to do that particular method you know that would be uh, that is something that you have to decide uh, you can discuss it with your supervisor and get some um, help regarding or some uh, uh, guidance regarding the choice of agency uh, now you can do the work wherever you are uh, uh, living right now so see if you are in a bigger city where there are larger number of agencies it will be very convenient for you definitely to go for agency of your choice but if you are in a city where there are limited number of agencies you have to again see how you can manage your field work okay so uh, select an agency first of all which is duly registered with with the government do not go for an agency i um, uh, would like to reiterate this fact do not go for an agency which is not registered okay so you wherever whenever you are visiting an agency or you are planning to do your field work or your block placement with that agency you have to make sure that that agency is registered under the government uh, under the society's registration act or the trust act or whatever the nature of the agency is so it could either be a society or it could be registered as a trust if it is an ngo if you are working as um, under the government uh, program say if you are working maybe under um, some department of the government say health department or some um, other uh, you know program run by the government then of course you need not look into that because uh, they don't need any kind of a registration that's a government organization so that will do but make sure either it is a government organization or if it is a non government organization then it has to be duly registered under the government only then you have to decide that you are going to work in that organization okay then also as a student you need to uh, understand your limitations how often you can visit the organization and work carry out your field work and uh, how long you can do that whether it is possible for you to give one whole day to the agency work or maybe you want to maybe give four hours every day or maybe you know for four hours alternate days to the agency this is something that you have to discuss with your supervisor and see how you can actually justify your work okay so uh, depending upon your availability and depending upon the feasibility so you decided uh, with the supervisor just discuss these things with the supervisor okay another thing is you have to know the limitations of the agency so sometimes the agency may not have sufficient work for you okay like this is very very possible especially when you are going into agencies which are dealing with some other uh, professional work which is not necessarily related to social work for example you may be working in a hospital setting you may um, you would want to work in a hospital setting but then in a hospital setting the kind of work that you can do may be very limited usually uh, uh, hospitals nowadays they do have uh, social workers hospital social workers but then there are other um, institutions or some other hospitals uh, you know specifically the private hospitals where they may not be a, a hospital social worker so in that uh, case you have to actually make efforts to find work for yourself 
so whoever the um, you know superintendent of the hospital or whoever is the health uh, uh, officer you know situated in that hospital he or she may not be in a position to actually guide you as to what are the different kinds of work that you can do this is very common in close settings so you have to actually be uh, very mindful of this fact okay sometimes and uh, the the agency also may not be in a position to provide you with certain requirements that you may have you know maybe because of the lack of infrastructure maybe lack of personnel in the agency maybe they are not having enough staff or maybe trained staff they may be having certain lack of funds okay they may be uh, the management may not be very active uh, in certain uh, uh, regards or maybe they are not having very good relationship with the clientele so in this case you have to understand that these dynamics definitely persist in the agency and then you have to accordingly see how you can manage your work okay so but just be very mindful when you decide where you want to work with again there are a lot of uh, uh, students i know who go for you know work uh, working with anganwadis especially it is very common with the female students because they are more convenient you know they are more comfortable in a setting where they are dealing with children or may maybe they are dealing with uh, women and girls so definitely you can again you can go for these settings but then you have to understand that you will have to find work for yourself you may not necessarily have a help over there or a supervisor over there who will be able to guide you as to what work you need to do so in this case first of all you may seek the help of your own supervisor okay uh, secondly you have to see the kind of work that they are um, providing to the clients and see where you fit in what are the kind of activities you may help the agency with okay like for example if you are working for an anganwadi see what kind of activities you can have with the children okay whether you can engage the children with certain more meaningful and constructive activities or maybe the teenage girls who come in there uh, you know uh, you can maybe provide some kind of a counseling service or some group work activities for the girls or even for the women pregnant and lactating uh, women who come for the, to the anganwadis then maybe if you want are interested in some kind of an outreach program you may again uh, see if you can uh, organize certain camps health camps or maybe some awareness camps in the community related to maybe uh, say uh, immunization or maybe uh, reproductive health or maybe uh, you know breastfeeding whatever so this is something that you will have to do it yourself okay you will have to see what are the activities you can think of of uh, you know doing with the clients when you do not have a proper guidance over there in the agency okay many a time many a times these agencies are structured in such a way that it is not possible to get a proper agency contact over there or a person who is actually trained social worker so you need to understand the limitations of the agency as well okay then thirdly uh, there are certain uh, important things that you need to understand for the journals first of all be very careful when you are uh, writing down the entries in the journals because once it is written over there you cannot change okay and this journal will be partly evaluated by your supervisor and partly it will be evaluated by an external eva evaluator who will be appointed by the school of social work ignu new delhi so you have to be very careful the kind of reports that you write in your journal so first of all the reports need to be very clear in good handwriting okay no overwriting no uh, uh, you know cutting and all those things that is not uh, that is not uh, allowed secondly before you start writing into the journal please make sure to bind the journal i have mentioned this even in the last uh, session but i strongly uh, suggest that you um, uh, bind get your journal binded so that the pages do not come up because by the time you will finish writing in the journal it will be all tattered so just uh, bind the journal before you start writing uh, in the journal okay third is that you need to be um, very careful about uh, the getting the stuff a photocopy getting the journal photocopy before you uh, send it for your 
uh, evaluation. So before you submit the journal to your uh, 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 supervisor, you please make sure that you have taken a photocopy. This is both for MSWL 13 as well as for MSWL 14. So you need to keep a photocopy of the journal with you all the time. So just in case if there is some kind of a postal loss or maybe some other, uh, you know, um, a way some uh, uh, manner maybe in which your journal is uh, has not reached the uh, school of social work new delhi then you can at least send this uh, uh, photocopy to the journal uh, sorry to the school and they will consider it okay so you please keep a photocopy of the journal of both the journals 13 and 14 uh, with you then I've also discussed about uh, the field work and uh, individual conference attendance is also mandatory. So all your uh, 30 days of uh, work, okay, and five days of individual conferences that is mandatory for your um, uh, MSWL 14 work, okay, your block placement. Now, uh, this is actually the pro forma which is there for the orientation visits in MSWL 13. But this is also the pro forma that you will use when you will start the first report of your MSWL 14, that is your block placement journal. Okay. Now, this is the kind of pro forma that you will use for your first report because you will be giving an introduction of the agency for which you are doing, in which you are doing your block placement. Okay. So, once you start uh, um, uh, writing about the agency, uh, writing about your block placement, you have to give a description of the kind of agency you are working with, okay, or with which you have done your block placement. So, this is what you are going to write. So, you will write the name of the institution, the address of the agency, okay, give the mission statement if there is any mission statement, then write down the objectives of the institution whether that agency is having any kind of objectives okay write down the name of the ceo or whoever the director of the agency is chief executive officer the terminology may be different for uh, different agencies depending upon the type of work so if you're working for a school the uh, the, uh, the the ceo would be principal okay if you're working for uh, maybe an anganwadi that would be an Anganwadi supervisor. If you're working for a hospital, maybe a, a health of um, uh, maybe the supervisor or could be any other uh, superintendent or anybody else. So, so just the terminology will be different for different agencies. You just have to write whoever is in charge of the agency. Then if it is a, an NGO, then there would be some board members. So you just write the about uh, the board members who are basically constituting the board of the non-governmental organization. Here you are supposed to write the type of work that that agency is involved with. Okay, so whether it's an education institution, it's a healthcare agency or whatever, write the type of work. Then you are going to write about the number and nature of beneficiaries. That is uh, the clients, okay, whom the organization is serving. You have to write the number of the beneficiaries and the nature of beneficiaries. So, uh, what, how much is the number of, of beneficiaries and their nature? As in, uh, is it dealing with uh, students or uh, children? Is it dealing with, uh, uh, you know, if it's an anganwadi, so it will be, it will be dealing with uh, children and uh, uh, adolescent girls and lactating and pregnant women. So, you will write about this in detail here you will mention the geographical area of work okay geographical area of work would mean uh, whether it is serving a particular locality or a village or it is serving one whole um, uh, district whatever their geographical area of work is then whether the agency is registered or not here you will uh, write down uh, the details as well as a registration number now i have already told you that it is mandatory that you work in an agency, carry out your block placement in an agency which is duly registered under the Society's Registration Act or Trust Act. Okay, if it is a non governmental organization. If it's a government organization, not a problem, it will be affiliated to some government institution or government department. But if it is a non government organization, it has to be registered. So you please uh, ensure that you work for an organization which is duly registered. Get the registration number and write it over here. For the organizational structure, you are going to draw the simple diagram showing the hierarchy within the organization. 
so who is in charge of what and uh, who comes under who and all that so that entire flow chart uh, will be there which will show the organizational structure and the pattern of authority in your organization okay next is the number of staff and the nature of staff so you have to mention the number of staff and the nature whether you're dealing with professional staff or you're dealing with the uh, volunteer uh, volunteers or you're dealing with the non-professional staff or support staff okay just write it over there here you will write the history of the organization that is you will write when that organization was formed by who formed the organization what with what with what objectives was the organization formed okay and all that so just a brief history of the organization here you can mention the source of funding also as in um, if the organization is uh, uh, getting the funds from some internal sources or from external sources that is whether it is um, getting it from some funding agencies or maybe it is carrying out some self sustaining uh, programs all that you have to uh, write down then just uh, observe the infrastructure facilities that is available uh, in the organization and you may even ask uh, the uh, staff about what all infrastructure facilities are there for example there are a lot of things that you may observe okay it may be having uh, um, maybe some vehicles okay it may be having some office uh, furniture maybe computer or a laptop or a printer or photocopier whatever okay whatever infrastructure facilities you see you are you are going to write and uh, besides that there are certain other things that you may also inquire from the staff for example if they are having a building whether that building is their own or if it is rented okay then if it is a school whether they are having a, a playground of their own whether they are having buses of their own or any other modes of transportation whether they are having a Uh, you know a hostel building or whatever other accommodation they are having for the teachers or for staff whatever infrastructure you see in the agency you have to write it down okay uh, then uh, uh, you have to write here about the relationship with other agencies so if it is collaborating with other agencies whether it is having some memorandum of understanding or memorandum of association or maybe it is affiliated to certain department whatever it is you are supposed to write all that any future plans that organization is having okay like maybe in the future they intend to uh, improve uh, their services or enhance the services the, the type of services that they are offering to the clients maybe they intend to enhance the uh, area or the geographical extent of their working all that or whatever future plans they are having you can just um, ask uh, the management and write it down any recognition and awards if they have won by the district government local government or by the state government or national level whatever recognition or awards they are having for their outstanding contribution to some cause you are going to write about it any affiliations whether it is having any affiliations with any other agency you are going to write about that over here at the affiliation part okay and apart from that any other information if you find suitable which you can mention here about the agency like maybe it has done some done some very uh, extraordinary work in some uh, you know area of work or they have contributed to some uh, very important cause you know whatever uh, some any information which you think is important then you may write it over here and finally what what all have have been your learning process like what have you learned uh, when you have uh, Uh, worked with that agency what has been your areas of work all that you are going to um, uh, write it down over there this is where your supervisor is going to comment on your work overall so this is something you don't have to write now this is a proforma for con concurrent field work i am not discussing it with you because this will uh, be discussed in your class for mswl 13 uh now after that we come to the kind of uh, okay pre term self assessment form this is again it will be discussed during your uh, uh, class for mswl 13 okay 
induction meeting this is again going to be discussed with your uh, MSWL 13 class Madam, if they don't don't want to give all those details, so <clears throat> what can we do that? Because there uh, are some pardon? agencies. There are some agencies. If they don't uh -huh. want to disclose their details from where they are getting funds or how, and if they don't want to share their registration number or what, they may allow us to work with them and to visit uh -huh. the fields. Then in that case, what? Can we do that? See, uh, what? Uh, no, I totally understand. That is true. There may be certain details about the agency which they may not want to uh, uh, share with you. Maybe uh, most of the time it is related to the funds, how they are generating funds, or what are the funding agencies that are helping them in that. So I understand um, that uh, you may ask them if they want to disclose. You may write about that. But, uh, you know, when when you are working with that agency for a, a month, okay, of a 45 days, okay. then you are definitely going to understand a lot of, uh, you know, details. So you need not worry about immediately getting the answers for all the questions. Like when you start working with that agency, you will come to know about a lot of nitty gritties about that agency, okay? So do not worry in, for the first time if they do not uh, disclose things. And as far and, uh, as the registration is concerned, registration is something that th that is that there is no problem in disclosing it. Okay, like it is a it is very mandatory for an organization to get themselves registered with the government. So if they are working as um as a society, if they are working as a trust, they have to get themselves registered under the Society's Registration Act and the Trust Act. And in case if they want to get funds from the foreign agencies, then they have to get themselves registered under the Foreign Contribution and Regulation Act. So there yeah, is no yeah. harm in disclosing this. And I think any agency who is working um, uh, in a very fair manner, they would be able to uh, disclose whether they are uh, you know, registered or not. So anyways, you need not bother about it. There are a lot of questions uh, for which you may get the answer as and when you start working with that agency. Yeah, you may have certain problem when you do your orientation visits because you will going to that you will be going to that agency only for a day. And in that visit, maybe some uh, agencies may have a problem in disclosing the funds, uh, you know, funding source. So it's OK. Just ask them nicely if they want to disclose it. If they do not want to disclose it, you don't pressurize them. OK, you can just okay. write that the agency staff are not willing to disclose the sources of funding. OK, just write it there in the report. That's not a problem. I understand that totally. For government organization, it won't be a problem because they get their fund from the government. This problem comes only when we are talking about the non-governmental organizations, right? So it's OK. In case of some NGO decides that they do not want to disclose a source of funding, you just uh, write it over there in the report itself. But this is for your uh, orientation visits. OK, that is a five days when you will be visiting these agencies. And uh, if I am I'm also working in a social organization. So OK, from same, same, even I uh, uh, visit the fields in uh, monthly mm -hmm. at least 15, 10 to 15 days I visit. So can I mention the same organization okay. name and uh, give all those details? It is uh, a social see, organization uh, registered under the okay. Registration of Society Acts. See, uh, um, principally, you can actually uh, mention that uh, you can uh, show your uh, fieldwork over there. But I think it would be more pertinent if you ask your discuss the same with your supervisor. So whoever your uh, supervisor is. Uh, you need to discuss these things with the supervisor. Although I don't okay. think it should be a problem at all. Yeah, although I don't think it should be a problem that if you're all already working or volunteering for a particular organization, you can show the fieldwork of that organization itself. Okay, but just understand that maybe I, I even as a supervisor, I had a number of students who are already working for organizations. Okay, they were already working for some NGOs. 
but uh, the kind of work that you have to show them is the basic field work okay you are not going to write about any supervisory role that you are playing in that organization just understand that so if you are already okay, working thank in an you. organization yeah if you are already working in an organization uh, and you are at a supervisory position you are not supposed to show that work you are going to show the basic you know entry level work or as a student because that is the kind of role that you will be playing okay so the, even the uh, uh, the same uh, kind of work that you uh, you are going to do for your field work so it's basically you know making home visits or um, uh, going to the community taking up sessions with the community uh, members and you know all of these things these basic animator level uh, work you have to show over the, uh, in the field work journal okay i hope i have made myself clear and regarding yeah thank you my madam okay. yes uh, and regarding uh, your um, um, uh, you know the choice of agency uh, and uh, your previous work experience i think it would be better if you discuss it with the supervisor and uh, uh, as far as i understand i don't think that should be a problem at all if it is convenient to you i don't know why i don't think so if the supervisor should be having any problem with that okay so okay this is uh, the part where uh, uh, we don't need to do this so this is orientation visits okay okay all of these aspects uh, uh will be covered uh, during your uh, mswl 13 classes okay so we will not be discussing this uh, particular part yeah after this everything has to be uh, done by the um, uh, it, it you will be uh, told about this in detail when you have your classes uh for mswl 13 from 20th onwards okay so um now as far as the choice of agency is concerned for your block placement then uh, you can uh, work with the close institutions like you can work in schools okay you can work for uh, orphanages for old age homes you can work even in prisons and other correctional centers observation homes okay you can definitely work for these uh, close institutions or residential institutions as they say uh second you can work with non governmental organizations so there are an, a couple of organizations you will find who are working on different issues so some are working in the field of education some are working in the field of health some are working for rural development and urban development or maybe for some other uh, uh, related to agriculture and other aspects so this is something that uh, it is totally up to you so you can even work for that you can work for any government department okay so they you have a number of departments who are having outreach programs and uh, they are actually uh, you know having a lot of um, uh, projects going on in the field like for example uh, the urban development uh, department department for rural development for tribal development family and uh, you know uh, child welfare Uh, then you are even having for social justice and empowerment all of these departments they will be having some ongoing field programs okay besides that you will all you you also uh, find that uh, your um, um, uh, 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 you know the city development uh, uh, authority like for example whatever city you are living in they may be having some development authority who are working on the field of uh, in the field of urban development okay you can work with them and uh, they may be having a lot of uh, programs related to smart cities and you know other uh, uh, basic aspects uh, related to uh, urban development and uh, sanitation uh, water all of these things so you can work with these government departments you can even work with media uh, with media um, houses so maybe if there is uh, some media center you can work with them but there the the work will be very limited so what i would suggest that instead of doing your uh, one month uh, uh, block placement maybe you can just do an orientation visit to such uh, centers okay so um 
then apart from that uh, you can also um, uh, see if you can work with some um, other uh, uh, you know outreach uh, programs by any other uh, government body so even the local self government institutions like the panchayati raj they also have some a lot of uh, development programs going on in uh, the urban and the rural areas so you can actually work with them also and uh, so it's basically up to you uh, you have to see uh, the kind of agency that you can work with based on your uh, comfort level okay based on where you are located where you can easily find a an organization like that who will give you uh, you know the necessary permission to do your work then you also have to understand your feas the feasibility of work like if you are already working somewhere uh, then you have to see whether how many days of work you can you know actually contribute um, in the field so how many days in the week you can contribute uh, for field work all of these things even the time for field work so all of these things you have to keep in mind and accordingly accordingly you have to select an agency in consultation with your uh, supervisor so before you uh, decide about the agency of your choice it would be very um, uh, you know suggest just suggestible if you uh, just consult your supervisor whether that agency can be considered for doing your block placement okay because you will be working for 30 days and uh, or you also need to um, see if uh, the kind of uh, methods that you want to employ okay like two methods that you have to employ for your uh, block placement that agency should be willing to give you cases or maybe you know work which pertains to that method so all of these things you have to keep in mind okay before you select an agency of your choice so any any development agency or any other agency which is working for the overall uh, you know welfare and uh, development uh, areas you can go for that uh, sometimes you will find even uh, there may be good international organizations who are working in the vicinity of your city or maybe you where you are living so you can see if uh, you can uh, get a, a good uh, this thing as a volunteer or as a student social worker you can just work for them so that would be a good uh, learning experience for you so of course uh, i mean uh, the the field is wide open for you it's just that you have to see where you can you know uh, how you can actually um, make yourself uh, available for the field work and um, also take time out to do the field work activities okay so this is uh, basically everything about uh, what uh, i wanted to share with the block placement work that is mswl 14 now um, any questions relating to whatever we have discussed since the past uh, session any uh, do we do we need to paste some photos madam of the field uh, visit i think it no. would be a good idea to do that Uh, yes yes you can do that absolutely it would be a very good idea if you paste some photos you don't have to do it on every for every single uh, report but maybe just uh, type to uh, try to have at least four to five uh, you know such photographs for your entire field work journal and for your blog placement uh, in fact it is highly recommended because it gives a very authentic uh, you know it um, um, uh, gives you a, gives a very um, it makes a work very authentic actually Okay, and, so uh, I um, should I should be in that photograph or what, or only community people should be there? Yeah, yes, of course. I mean, you can take up a photograph where you are there, uh, you know, sitting and taking up the group work sessions, or you know, making, or maybe you know, just taking up some um, um, organizing some work, or maybe just whatever. I mean, either okay. you can also be in that photograph, or if you want to show something very specific to that agency, that you can, you know, uh, uh, maybe like you have. organize some meeting over there of the shg members or whatever or some skill development program for the uh, for the kids then this is something that you can take photograph for okay and you can write it down below the photograph where exactly uh, you know it was taken and if those uh, uh, 
photographs are geo tagged that would be really nice because it will all the more give a very authentic look to the overall uh, you know scenario so because uh, see the thing is ki you can it's like you know the students can have photographs taken from anywhere from the net also they can take and uh, they can paste it but if they are geo tagged then it becomes difficult to actually you know uh, fool the uh, the overall work so it makes your work very um, authentic so you can you can have that photographs is a very good idea and in fact i highly recommend it as a supervisor to my students thank you madam any other questions yeah any other questions any question relating to the reports okay so if there are no questions then um, i can wrap up the uh, session and um, uh, from 20th onwards since we have already done with this so we just needed to have two sessions for our mswl 14 part now your next session for mswl 13 will commence from 20th and uh, uh, another um, um, uh, min counselor is going to come and is going to take your session for mswl 13 uh so you can um have the counseling sessions for mswl 13 and then start doing with your field work uh, you know uh, and um, uh, after you are done with mswl 13 then you can start with your mswl 14 okay so your mswl 13 journal should be completed before you start with your block placement okay now this is something that you need to understand although we had a class before for mswl 14 but you will complete your mswl 13 before and once it is completed and submitted for evaluation only then you will start with your mswl 14 okay am i clear on that and whatever certificate is required please have a good look at the journal there will be some certifications that will be required from the field work agency in which you are working so you please get those certificates and get a copy of that certificate because there are a lot number of places where you will have to paste that that copy okay so please uh, keep the certificate copy of the certificate with you all the time for your personal requirement also and since you will be requiring the uh, photocopy of that certificate for pasting in some other uh, journals also for your second second year journal also you will be requiring the you know the certificate of the agency for your first year so all this you have to keep it uh, keep it in mind and accordingly um and as i have already said uh, uh, keep a photocopy of the entire journal with you so that will come very handy if in case your original journal is lost okay in case sometimes it has happened it has happened with two of my students and thankfully they had kept a photocopy so they were able to actually uh, you know submit the photocopy and that was considered by the school of social work okay so with this uh, i think we can uh, call an end to our session uh, thank you all uh, so much for uh, yes uh, uh, ms sushma you want to ask something yes, yes ma'am yes ma'am yes. can i hear your phone number please okay i will uh, send it across to you in the message so that uh, uh, so uh, everybody can have it okay i'll just send it in the chat okay uh, yes i have sent it in the chat for everybody to see ओके सो so with this uh, i think uh, uh, we can call the session to an end and uh, thank you all so much for joining me
in this session and uh, patiently listening to all the details being uh, uh, um, given to you. Uh, thank you very much and um, have a great uh, time. Okay, all the best for the future. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, bye.